Okay, so since we have a quorum, I would like to call the meeting to order, Finance Committee meeting. Uh, today is the 19th of May at 5.35. So uh, today we're going to be talking, you know, going over another uh, review of the budget. Uh, there has been some changes. David sent it to us with a few changes. I quickly wanted to um, go over just a few of my thoughts. Um, I thought I would just give some quick thoughts. Then I would ask um, a few of my uh um, other members to give some thoughts, and then I would then like to just jump in and go over the budget. If we have time, uh, well, the other thing is David's going to go review the 112 budget in case of an emergency, um, that we'll have to review that. And then after that, if there is still time, um, we will be reviewing the warrant. But my guess is we won't have time. Uh, so I would be asking, I'll reach out to everyone after the fact to look to um, set up another meeting just for recommendations on the warrant. Um, so to start with, um, I do see that we did, David did do some changes on this, um, on this budget. Um, the changes being such as um, we, we had some major discussion about HR. We did have some major discussion about in the past about the planning. Um, we had some, um, the select board asked to move some items from the building over to the fire. David's made a lot of those changes. Um, so I reviewed all his um, notes. They made sense on some of those changes. Um, the, the, the problem is, is we're in the problem like the school is in every year where there's so many unknowns. Unknowns uh, with the state, with the Fed, with, with us, with where people are. There's so many unknowns. Um, we're Everyone has, we have everyone uh, from the Fed all the way down to their town has declared a state of emergency. So this is, this is serious times. So I think that I want to show the taxpayers, this is, I, I've never spent more time on a budget ever. Um, and I've spent a lot of time on this budget and I want to show the taxpayers I've done everything that we could to, um, you know, do the best that we can to on this budget. I do not want to ever have to go back down the road and ask for an override because we're stuck um, or have to go into our reserves if we don't have to. We are, I want to make good planning. And if for some reason, and I want to prepare like David's prepared for the 112 budget, I want to prepare for the worst case. So for some reason, if we, it isn't as bad as we think it could be, then at that time we can, we will have the money. And then we can then turn around and say, let's prioritize and start making um, payments or doing projects that we maybe put off, give, you know, putting money back in. So what I would really, really like to see done is um, I, which I didn't see on this, this revised um, budget, but I would like to, I, I am saying it again, I wanted to see that we had more of a consistency with the salaries. Um, we will go over these items and maybe there is more that I'm not seeing and I just don't see it. So I will um, allow for more time to explain it, but I didn't see there is a lot I have questions about, especially in the DPW. I would like to ask, I would like to ask that the HR person at least ask the unions. I know we talked about it, but I don't think it was done. I would like to see that he asked to see if we can do something about it. And I also would like to ask if the HR person would also um, do, I would like all people that have contracts and everyone, so everyone that has a contract with the town of Hadley and every department head to look and, and I would like to ask them to see if they would voluntarily forego one year increase. So I'm just asking if they, it would be a complete volunteer thing, but would that department head, would that contracted position forego just one year of an increase? So I would like to put that out and I would like the HR person to ask if they would do, you know, if someone would volunteer that. If they would, it's fabulous. So it would just help and show the support because we are in 
We are in to share the pain of what everybody else is experiencing. Um, there is a, you know, we're lucky we have jobs, but there's a lot of people that don't. And when the unemployment and that increase stops and the PP loans are gone, that, you know, we're going to get hit hard down the road. So I would like to ask that. There are a few other items on here that I would like to ask when we go through them that they get pushed off a year. Maybe we put them into the finance reserve budget. And if it doesn't, and if we don't need to hold on to it, we can delegate it back. But um, I think we need to really look at some of this stuff. So what I'm gonna do now is if I could ask everybody else just to chime in to see, to make sure that you're on the same page as I am and to make sure that you, you know, I don't wanna be speaking for everybody. So I just would like, um, I don't know if you wanna, Paul, you wanna start? Oh, Paul, I think you're, if you're talking, you're muted. Um, sorry. Um, David, I think you've done a good job hitting a lot of the things that we were looking to cut back on, but I just think that we are still, I, I, I think this is going to be a tougher time than, than this budget anticipates. I agree with Amy on that. And I also agree that there's a lot of people who are hurting right now that are out of work that may not have jobs for a while. Um, and I think that everybody who is working needs to look at that and say, you know, what can we do to help all those people? Right now in the town, I think we should be looking at if we can uh, freeze increases. I think that would be something we should ask people if they could help with. Um, I realize that we have fantastic employees. I mean, I, I have to say, I'm very, I, you know, I used to live in Northampton for a long time, and I'm not saying Northampton doesn't have, you know, great DPW and all that, but I really think we get our money's worth in our town in terms of what we get. Um, I think we get great services. I'm very proud to live in this town. And I've only lived here for, you know, I've owned property here for a long time, but I've only been a resident for uh, around 10 years or so. And, but I think this is when everybody in the town at the government level has to really pull together for the whole populace, uh, all the taxpayers. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we, we, need to, we need to dig deep here. And we're not looking to lo uh, lower the employment level. We're not looking for people to, uh, for layoffs. We want to maintain all the jobs. And I think we should reserve as much money as we can in the budget for reinstating, should, should it turn out that, that things are much, turn out not to be as dire as we think they are. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Paul. Alexi, would you mind saying a few words? Alexi, your mic is muted. Thank you. Can you hear me now? So I agree with you guys. I think as the financial committee, uh, it makes sense to advocate for a conservative financial approach at this time. I mean, if it's not appropriate now, it's when would it ever be appropriate? So um, I see nothing wrong with asking people if they would voluntarily forego uh, their 2% raise or whatever. Um, it's voluntary, so they don't have to if they need that money. Um, I guess it's voluntary. I see no problem with it. Um, I think maybe there should be uh, a return to uh, their salary level after the pandemic, as if even if they forego the raise, they should get back up to the previously held level. So if the economy is back to normal, they're, they shouldn't suffer because they did a valiant thing and gave something up. It shouldn't haunt them down the rest of their career. Um, I guess those are my thoughts upon hearing that. I also want to echo everybody about uh, the quality of the people who work here. I, I feel very strongly that I'm lucky to live here. Everyone's so great. Uh, the quality of professionalism of all the town employees I've interacted with is amazing. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Lexi. Uh, Dylan, would you mind? Um, yeah, I like the idea of the voluntary cut. I don't know how effective that may or may not be. Um, I do agree what you said earlier, Amy, about uh, getting hearing from David about uh, 
any increases and making sure that's all in line, everyone that is across the board, uh, that there's no extra bumps in, in uh, pay. So something to look at. Uh, but yeah, uh, pretty much in line with you guys. All right, so this is something we need to bring to the select board um, because it's ultimately their call. Um, I think that personally, I think this is stirring up more trouble than it's worth uh, because you're you're asking for coordination among lots of different independent bodies, independent elected officials, uh, contracted workers, union union across uh, municipal and school, uh, you're going to have a very uneven response and not a whole lot of money coming back because of it. So I think this is this is fraught with a lot of, uh, um, I would be very concerned about going to the select board and suggesting that we, we take this approach. I see what you're trying to do. Um, I think that there are other places where we can get more dollars than what we're talking about. I, I, I don't, I, I, I look, well, we can go at some point when we start to look at it, we're going to, we need to, uh, uh, maybe some contracted spots are not a lot. Okay. Um, so in dollars, maybe someone's only, you know, is only getting a small increase of 2.88 percent so it's not gonna it's not gonna do a ton well what it would do is is bring a little bit of um you know uh show what they what we have gone out and, and, and have done for people um so it would be bring some goodwill but it also would um the the highway department they seem to be much higher i mean i'm we, when we go into there we'll see some big increases but um and, and I'd like to see what your thoughts are, why that is. Because the last time we talked, that made it sound like the union was, you were saying the union was at not even 2%, they're under 2%. So I don't really understand why it shows like a 10% increase on some and some others. So, um, you know, why don't we just jump jump right in and just quickly go right through the line and just, just jump in and, and get through this, if you don't mind. So then you can just, because there, there'll be other items in here too, not just people. So um, if, if we could go um, start right with the select board, if you don't mind, um, one. And maybe this isn't where it is. I, I have a question, David, that I was thinking would be in select board, but I don't, actually don't know where it is. Do, are we in the budget, are we um, doing some software program to for all our licensing and permitting? Do we have an increase on that? So there are so a number of places in the budget where there's uh, permitting and licensing software maintenance agreements. Uh, you find that in the collector's office, in the select board office, in the um, assessor's office. Uh, and other places besides. So I'm looking at, I, my understanding is there is a new, you are have been looking at a new program down the road for online permitting, okay? Yes. Right, and how much is that, that particular item that you're talking about? Uh, the, the one that I'm recommending is $33,000, which is not in this budget, by the way. That's what I was looking for. So where where is that? Is it? Where would I'm, going to be, I'm going to be writing a grant for that. Okay. Okay. Then that answers that question because I, I thought it might be in the budget. Then I'm, yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess unless someone else has any questions, um, I really don't want to, I don't have many questions about the select board. Um, I thought that's where that might have been. I don't really have any questions about town administrator. I see that you have decreased that a little bit because we're looking not to, that person might not be hired as soon as we thought it, what she was going to be or he was going to be. Correct? Yes, yeah, start sometime around Labor Day, a week before, a week after, something like that. 
Um, I do have a question before we move on. David, off the top of your head, um, all of the increments in raises, do you have a number, a dollar number, as opposed to a percentage across the board of what that would be? Say there was, uh, was just flat. No, but I, I, can, I can get that for you. I'm sorry, I don't have that off the top of my head. No worries. I'm just wondering how big of a dollar uh, amount we're, we're talking about. If you have a ballpark in mind. I'll, uh, I'll get you that information as soon as I can. David, I, if I can ask for a clarification, when you when you said you didn't think there'd be much savings, was that because this is a voluntary request? Uh, well, you're, uh, my, underst my understanding from our conversation from last week was that you're looking to get everybody at 2%. So number of people are 7 point, uh, not 7 point, it's 1.7%. Uh, number of people are 2%, number of people are 0%, so number of people are 2.5%. Uh, um, the only people who are real outliers are the police, and they're at 8%, and that's because we need to bring them up to the market standard. Okay. Um, so to get everybody to 2%, it would be short dollars indeed, because you're only talking about a handful of positions that would be affected. Uh, if you're talking about getting everybody down to zero percent, um, that's a different pocket full of rats. Right. Okay. Uh, so I don't. Um, if I would like to jump right to the um, line items, right for the. Um, unless someone else has something, jump in, please. Um, I have a question yes. uh, from your email, David, uh, back on the 15th, you had mentioned that the fuel savings were going to come in soon. Do you have a yes. number on that for us? Yeah. So, uh, the FY 20, we're paying something like $2 and 60 cents per gallon for diesel and gas. Mm -hmm. The fuel bids came in, uh, at a dollar less per gallon. So there's some substantial savings there, um, which, I propose that we throw that into, uh, uh, do two things with it. Uh, throw it all into OPEB, take pressure off free cash. Okay. No, it's... Where do you, where do you have those in the line items, David? Um, uh, th that, that information just came in today and I haven't had a chance to make the budget adjustment, but just, Give me a chance and um, wherever I put my date book, it's got the information. Oh, it's right in front of me. Uh, all right, so we're, we're talking about 19,000 gallons of uh, heating fuel, uh, $2.68 a, a gallon. Um, now we're talking about $1.68 per gallon. So there's uh, some substantial savings there. So, so under town building operations, is that where you would have some of that, David? Yeah, so it's going to be spread out among uh, DPW, uh, police, fire, uh, town operations, um, other places that have a gasoline account or heating oil account. So it will be spread out, and I'll make the adjustments. I just haven't had the time to do that, but... Taking the aggregate number of 19,000 gallons of, of diesel fuel used uh, every year and reducing that by a dollar per gallon, that's not bad for a small town. No, I just couldn't find where that was. So when I looked at town building, I've looked in the budget. I can't find where you have like the heating, like the propane tanks, like the propane tank for um, the senior center. I think that's contained under, it's mislabeled under electricity. Okay. Well, 
Well, I went down from the building uh, town operations and I asked you because I saw all these numbers. So I asked what number goes with what? Yeah. And under electricity, I had one for the senior center town hall, Russell School, um, uh, safety complex, North Hadley Hall, the, the new one, the new build, uh, fire station, the library, and Hadley Media. Those were all the line items for electricity. Right. So, so, and then I see for heat and gas, I see something for, let's see, that one would be Town Hall, the first one for 3,800. And I see for, I think that one might be maybe North Hadley Hall, or I'm not sure, maybe the, the public safety. For thirteen thousand four hundred, I think that's public safety. But other than that, I'm looking at the senior center because they have a propane tank. North Hadley Hall has a propane tank, right? So that's how they heat. All right. So what what I need to do is I need to take a closer look at this particular budget, and I can um, I can make sure that everything is been labeled correctly okay. and the amount is there to support those buildings. Okay. Yeah, I, I, um, I think this budget, unfortunately, we have a lot of savings in the fuel, but I think this budget is low. I think that we are, um, with the numbers, I, I think it needs to be looked at. When you uh, have, yeah. Now, the library has a huge amount for electricity, but they heat on electricity, I think, right? That's how they... That's that's correct. So that's why theirs is higher, but other, all, the, all your other buildings in town are looking for where their heating expenses. So, um, all right. So we'll check out, we'll have to check on that. All right, so that's all I have for um, the town building. Would the fuel savings be, uh, I think the other week we put, we increased the OPEB funding from $0 to like 17,000. Would the fuel savings be on top of that 17,000 or is that a part of? where that 70,000 is coming from. It, it should be on top, not one-to-one, -one, but maybe uh, half of that uh, can be applied to uh, of, uh, OPEP contribution. The other half can be uh, diverting uh, free cash away from OPEP. Again, trying to develop a uh, substantial uh, amount of surplus uh, free cash in order to put that into stabilization to help your budget for next year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask about was the band bid results. Uh, you, you mentioned that you were going to hear about that Tuesday, yesterday. Yeah, so Linda's online here. She can give us the, the precise numbers, but uh, the band bid uh, came in uh, very favorably. Yes, we um, have our two million uh, dollar ban, which will uh, is the one of the last bits of the buildings that will take us to November when they roll into a bond. But that um, that came in at one point two zero nine seven and something. So one point two zero nine. So that's very nice. And we won't even pay that much because, uh, in, I mean, the practical percentage uh, or, or interest on the $2 million is going to be less because it's only for, it's only taking us till November. It's not even a full year. So uh, and then the other one, the $670,000 on all of the, the vehicles and town equipment and various other things that had been approved at an earlier point were purchased during this year, uh, that was at 1.3%. And that's a new bank to us, Adams Community Bank. And I should have mentioned the uh, the other, the $2 million is with Oppenheimer. So um, we had a nice collection of bids, five bids on the $2 million and um, eight to 10 on the other. So it was a, it was, it, it's turned out well for us. And um, yes, there will be a savings in interest. I, I haven't been able to um, work through how that's going to be applied. Is that what you were getting at then, David? you want to talk about that as a next step at this point, or you want to wait? 
So the, the general principle would be that if we, if we save the interest on debt exclusion, then we can use that savings to take pressure off the taxes. If we um, made uh, saved interest off of uh, interest within the levy, then we can use that to uh, uh, add to OPEB without uh, affecting taxes. Yeah, and, and, and they, are, they are two different issues because I know that um, the Finance Committee really wanted to have the higher amount with payments within the levy so that we could continue buying things in capital. So that's that's one to just to, um, one discussion item. And the other about using it against uh, the debt. Um, so I'm going to have, I'll separate those out and come up with what kind of a savings that is and how much, um, yeah. I just, I just haven't, haven't had time. time. We, we just got, got those bids. It just happened today. And then I had to print checks this afternoon and other things. So it's, it's worth taking some time and, and seeing how that is. I think when I was originally calculating and I did it uh, at least one and a half and probably at as high as 2% interest because we didn't know what was going to happen. I still don't know what's going to happen next. Um, but we do now have all of the interest years that we will be paying in fiscal 21 because anything we take hereafter um, all of our borrowing hereafter will be, um, the payments will come due in 22. So we have all the figures and I'll do some work on that and see see how much play and, and how much we want to shift things. So Linda, when you're looking at those numbers, can you also look at it because um, and, con and consider the two items that we talked about in capital planning that are already looked at possibly coming out of debt exclude or no coming out of the levy. I think it's the generator and the schools IT. Uh, they will not be borrowed this year. I mean, in fiscal 20, because there's six weeks left, they won't be buying those. And actually it won't even be approved until June. So assuming they're approved in June, uh, they could any time of July 1, um, if we're if we're voting for it to be within the levy, which is what's being requested, um, then no further ballot votes are, are needed. And they could then go about buying them any time. Um, so it's been our practice um, for, that, for that level of borrowing, anything that isn't a building, that we're trying to do that uh, within the bands and the bands we, we want, want them to, to come, come together. together. We, we do, do the borrowing at the very end of the year, year just such, such as right now, now which is why the 670000 we're doing now will we'll then come due a year from now. We'll pay off some of it and we'll add to it the new borrowing from the coming year. So what I'm getting at is that we will add that borrowing will happen for what we vote for in June. It won't happen until next June. And then interest and payments on that would begin in fiscal 22. So it would not affect this budget. Oh, okay, so so then, yeah, we might wanna look at, do we need, you know, is it smart to be putting all that in, that extra money in to maybe- True, except that, that part of that, that was made the space so that we would be able to do it for this additional borrowing. Which I, I think, uh, Amy, if I'm remembering, it's like about 170,000 between the two yeah. that we're adding into it. Um, so uh, what, what we're going, going to do with the payments, what we were planning to do with the extra payment there would, would take care of the old, more of the old borrowing and make space um, for, uh, for these new items. And you know, come fall, there's gonna be a, some more going in. So um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a judgment call. We don't know right now what we're weighing it against because we don't know what we're going to be wanting to get in the fall, um, just as we can. Can I just say a couple of things? Um, we're injecting $100,000 of free cash into the um, paying down principal within the levy in order to make the, the room for uh, any kind of a capital plan moving forward. Because it's very clear that the voters said no more debt exclusions for capital items. They don't want to see that anymore, but we can't ignore the fact that we have uh, capital needs or uh, if we do that, we're going to develop a, uh, a, um, a crushing obligation later on. We'll just kick the can down the road until we can't do that anymore. And then, then, then we'll have to pay an enormous amount of money. Uh, the two projects that we're talking about, I think are worthy of your, your support. The, 
public safety complex uh, emergency generator is currently old, so old that uh, you have to custom make parts in order to keep it going. Uh, that supplies old, uh, energy to your public safety complex, police, fire, dispatch, and ambulance. If that goes down, then then they are in difficult uh, straits indeed. Uh, the school IT, you know, all these schools around here in March had to go to remote uh, learning. Um, and they did an excellent job, but they had to do it on the fly. Now that we've had the chance to think about it and the summer to think about ways of uh, providing better educational experiences for children when we uh, come back in the fall. And let's say that there is in order to continue keeping the schools closed, then communities that invest in that uh, educational software and hardware uh, is, are going to do better than communities that don't. Uh, and I think in the long run, that's going to protect your school choice revenue. You bring in between five hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars annually for the school choice. If we don't provide for a good experience for children to learn remotely, then people will choice out and will lose that uh, revenue stream. So I think it's a, it's a very wise investment. And again, defense in depth. We're trying to reinforce as much as of our revenue streams as we can. Okay, great. No other questions there, I don't think. Um, anybody else? No. All right, so uh, jumping back in, um, I have a question on the fire department. If we could go, uh, David, if you don't mind running, going, looking at the fire department. Um, just going, just quickly, I don't know if we need to increase the fire department at all. I didn't know, I see all the other departments have at least 2% on their salaries or in wages, and I see zero with the fire department. Did we just miss it, or did the fire department forego um, any type of increase? I'm not sure. Yeah, this is uh, this is something we can double check with Mike. But this is uh, Mike's proposed budget, with the exception of the eighty-five thousand, uh, which was a new position uh, that was going to be another firefighter and IT specialist, um, and then the thirty thirteen thousand six hundred um, is a reduction to what? Uh, the North Hadley Village uh, oil, uh, which has been transferred over to the uh, uh, 190 budget. Yeah, I hear that. So other than that, that's the only change made there. I restored everything that I had previously transferred over to 190 or 490 uh, after the select board meeting of the last time. Yeah. I just didn't know if we had a, um, if we have to look at an increase there. So I wanted to just mention it because it looked odd to me. Yeah, except except for the eighty-five thousand, that's his number. Uh, and and I, he and I walked through this uh, a couple of days ago. And David, the and the gasoline diesel is is at the original rate. Yes, the thirteen. That's pounds. correct. That's so correct. Got, what about a 30 percent, forty percent reduction coming there? Potentially. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right, next are uh, communications. If we can take a quick peek at that. I have a question, are you having, is that, I think that's still in there with an increase of hours um, for the part-time. I think they're looking still to increase hours. I was hoping that we could forego any increase of, op because like the collector's office forego the increase of hours. So I was hoping all we could just forego all increase of hours and all, all uh, new hires. Um, but is that, am I correct? Is that an increase of hours for the, for the communications? I don't think so. It went from, uh, it's, it's an increase of 15% on part-time wages. So that's why I think it's the increase of hours. All right, let me double check that then. Great. 
All right, next, uh, we could look at ambulance. Uh, the ambulance, I have, I did talk to Mike and um, he mentioned that the call volume is low, a little bit lower. Yeah. So I want to be conservative. At first I was thinking, you know, we did so well, why don't we, you know, we'll get all our money back. But like um, now I'm thinking we need to be more conservative and think, well, what if we don't get all our money back? So um, I didn't see what you had in the um, revenues um, for money coming back. Did you make it? About 250 coming back and according to my numbers. Do you think that's, a, do you, instead of 250, do you think we should adjust it even less? I mean, I, I don't want to, it seemed like he said that they were, they were low. So maybe, do we want to say yeah. less than half or something? I don't, I, I don't have a solid recommendation at this time because I haven't seen any data. Yeah. Um, uh, I just think maybe we should, we should look at tweaking that a little bit so we don't have a surprise. Okay. I, I, I hope we get it all back, but what he said was he, he, he mentioned half the call, so. All right, I'll talk to the chief and get some data going. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Building inspector, if we could just quickly look at that. I wanted to double check Didi uh, on here. How many hours did you give Didi? Didi works a total of 35 hours. I've apportioned her between three offices. She, oh, works, okay. she works 24 hours at uh, the uh, uh, building inspector's office. She works five hours for the, the treasurer, and she works five hours for the planning board. Okay. I thought she was at 40 hours. So when I, I did the math, I thought maybe we were off. So yeah. you're saying 35 hours. 35. Okay. Okay. Um. I did see that because I saw that you put it in in the uh, planning board, and I saw that you did it with the treasurer. So I saw that. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, if we, I don't have any other questions on anything else until you know until I get all the way to highway. So if no one else wants to mention something, if we can just jump right to highway, that would be great. So on the highway, um, that's where I see the big increases. Now the top line, the PW professional salaries, is that just part of Chris? Is that Chris set alone? It wouldn't be Chris alone. It has a number of people in there, but uh, the idea is that a third, a third, a third uh, pays for your professional salaries uh, with sewer, okay. water, and highway. Uh, would pay for your professional salaries. Okay. I just didn't know who the professional salaries were. I didn't know if that was just Chris or if it was a number. So the yeah. ad administrative salaries, I thought were maybe sharing and maybe others. But no, no. That, that would be Jessica, new Jessica. That's, that's a new Jessica. That, that's the old Rose. Old Rose. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, those numbers I wanted. That's that's the where I really looked at it, and I saw the the percentage increase, um, and I realized it's one third, one third, one third. But I see the the over the four percent, four point six four, uh, six point five five. This one is ten percent increase. Is that a new person that is a 10% increase? Uh, the 10% is the uh, aggregate union increase. So it's all, they, those three things are all union. All those increases. No, no, the first two are non-union and the last one is union. So the first two increases. So that old Jessica or the new Jessica is getting a 6.55% increase? 
No, because that's that's uh, spread out among a number of people. So um, it's something like one and one point seven five percent for most people, and uh, Chris Okafor at two percent. Okay, so I don't know how it comes up with such a high percentage, right? Maybe when we go to the other, the other part of that is I've sort of pushed um, uh, uh, salaries out of cemetery and building maintenance, and I've pushed them back into uh, the highway division. It looked like the cemetery was pushed back into building maintenance. Because building maintenance and cemetery involve getting new bodies in, and that's something that we're not in a position that we can support this year. Okay. So I'm looking at these percentages and then I look at the sewer percentages and those are over too. That's 4.64% higher on professional salaries. And I look at water and that's, let's see, professional salaries, another 4.64%. Yeah. So I think that's, is that all a contract? All that 4.64 increase on all those three professional salaries? No, the, uh, well, some of it, yes. Some of it will be and some of it will not be. Uh, what I can tell you is that people are not getting more than 2%. So it's if that's the basic concern that um, an individual is, should not be getting more than 2% under this, or this budget. But the way the things are aggregated and separated, it's kind of hard to see that. Okay. Because I take last year's information and you, you see the difference between this year and you see a percentage change. I can't figure out how you're still coming up with that. Okay. So the next thing is the uh, cemetery. I did see when I'm looking, because all these are intermingled. I see that you did that. that um, the, the highway department, the water, the sewer, the cemetery, and the building maintenance. The cemetery looks like, if I looked at it right, you have the only amount in cemetery salaries was 13000 where the budget used to be for the whole cemetery, 25000 So we're off about twelve. But then I figured it was in building maintenance because that increased by 91%. So you increase that building maintenance salaries by $25,000. So I'm thinking either we have new people or, or something else is going on. Because I was expecting it to increase by 12, but you got it increased by 25. So I think there's either new yes. people or something. I took, I, took, I, took, I took a position out of there. Um, I took a position out of there, and this um, this increase is partly Gary's uh, Gary Berg's salary, but I'm also pushing part of that elsewhere. So we keep uh, Gary Berg, but we don't have the the new laborer coming on, and we don't have that laborer working in the cemetery. So what's Gary Berg's salary? Is he in? He's part 13000 and then part in building maintenance? And partly in um, uh, highway. So he's not in building maintenance. He's part in highway. Well, he's, he's in building maintenance, highway, and um, I think cemetery. Okay. Well, he got 13000 in salaries in cemetery. It must be Gary. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I, what I was trying to achieve here is, is that we used Gary – for what he's uh, been uh, contracted for with the select board okay. Um, okay. and not add bodies to the payroll for building maintenance and for cemetery. That's the adjustment that I've tried to make here. Okay. Well, I just wanted to know, so that it, it makes sense that you separated them, but it just seems like that number is really high, the $25,000 increase in building maintenance salaries then. It's up 91%. Yep, I can, I can take another look at that. Um, 
I want to make sure that I'm covering the people that we have. And oh. uh, I think I think maybe next year when we present this information, we should have a flow chart to show how each position is being funded. <laughs> David, you moved the you moved the ball under the cups, and I have trouble following yeah. them sometime. Where are the yeah, beans? the, the uh, decoder ring. That's what we need—a decoder ring. Especially you split them like DB and you split and some of these other people. I can't follow it, but I can see the increases, and that's what I'm looking at. So I see the dollars and I see the percentage, and and, and it tells me there's something going on. So that's that's all I can say. Because <laughs> um, the uh, on the highway department, I, I I also is there some programs in the highway department that we can forego for one year, that we could actually save a little money. One of the items that I thought would be a great thing to say, okay, well, and, and maybe we put it in like the finance reserves. And if there is the money and if we do have it, we can put it back into here. But the trees, the shade trees or that whole program we have with the trees. I know that Eversource just went through all of 47, they were cutting down all sorts of trees on their bill. So now maybe we can forego the whole tree thing for a year and save on, on that one item. Not not to say that we're not going to keep continuing. It's a good project, but can't we push it off for one year and save that money and put it in aside and if and not use it unless you know what do you think? Can we can we push that aside for one year? Windstorm. Yeah, well can we put it in into the finance um, part, and if you don't, and if we, you know, if they, if an emergency comes up, we use it. I mean, of course, we'll use it if we need it. But if we, if we can get away with it, do we have to budget a whole year for it? Um, I think what I think the situation is is that for years we've underfunded tree services. Um, and we have a backlog now uh, of trees that are diseased and broken and need to be replaced. Um, we can put it on ice for a year, but I don't think that's a, I don't think that's wise. I think keeping up with it is a better way of, of handling the tree situation than handling. Well, I think that if we can, if we, like I said, if we can, if we have the money and we didn't, and it's better than what we thought. Well, and it's a, and we need to do it, then we do it. I'm not saying it's not a good project, but we're in an emergency and we don't know what our numbers are. And if I can say, let's push something aside, I'd rather push a tree aside and, 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 and hold off on that a little bit. I mean, we did a lot. There's a lot of tree work that was done this year. Okay. Right? So, uh, like I said, we have about 10 minutes before we're at 6.30. Uh, we are hoping that the Zoom conference continues, but it might cut out. Is there, is there in the next 10 minutes some areas of agreement that we can come to? I don't know what you're exactly. So I just thought, I mean, most of it, a lot of the budget was, I, I see that you've made adjustments. They looked good. Um, I I think that the revenues, you know, are the best we can do with the planning, except for the ambulance. Um, yeah. I don't think, I think that a lot of the other town hall items that you've made adjustments to, uh, but I think that, you know, I, I, what, what, what are you looking for, David, for me to say? I think so, so, okay, so I can go back over this budget one more time and try to squeeze a penny out of every single line that I possibly can and apply that uh, savings to wherever things seems like we're the weakest or to reserves uh, or to OPEB. Uh, I can do that. Is that what you would like me to do? Yeah, so I'd like you to squeeze the pennies out as much as you can. Put it to the more, uh, you know, we have some in OPEB, but put it to the reserves. And then with the reserves, we can move it to whether we move it to OPEB or we move it to wherever needs to, you want to, you can prioritize at that time. But if you put it in the reserves, then 
you know, at least the, the, res the finance reserves, then you don't need town meeting and you can move it. That's it's, it, if, we, if, if we can use it, let's move it. But we can, reinstate, we can reinstate some of these things. Yeah. David, I, I, I can understand how frustrating this has got to be for you. I know you've spent a lot of time on it. And I, I think you've done a really good job of trying to get this town on a long-term footing. And, and I think our bond rating really shows that. And I really appreciate that. And I know this has got to be really difficult to have us in here nitpicking things, but we're trying to anticipate a very difficult situation that you know we think is coming. And we just want to take anything we can put aside right now and delay, if it's possible to just put some things off for a year or, or put the money aside, and then if things are good, we'll end up refunding re, uh, them. Uh, but we're just trying to do our best, like every family in Hadley right now that's looking at their family budgets and what they should spend money on right now. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. None of this is personal for no, me. No, no. Um, yeah, but I, I, I know as someone who writes copy what it's like to be have somebody, you know, go through and try and change one word here and there, it, you know, and... and uh, I, it's difficult, and I and I appreciate the position you're in. I really appreciate your work here. I mean, we've done a lot of changes and a lot of adjustments here, and we're just trying to squeeze every penny we can out to save money aside, possibly to put the things right back in the budget later. But we really need to be very careful here. I, I don't think I think we're going to get a big surprise from the state down the road, um, and I, of, uh, that's not going to be good news. You know, even the lottery funds are drying up. So uh, I, I just uh, think that anything we can put off, anything we can do to get people to spend less, find a savings, put something off that doesn't detrimentally harm the town right now is the is what we need to do. All right. So what is the, what is the ceiling for the reserve fund? You were talking about a hundred thousand.